Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. This is Ray Dolan at 12 in association with Canor Limited, uh, the best cleaning company in Mullingar, the only cleaning company in Mullingar. So they are the people to contact. Uh, they're called Canor Limited. Uh, hygiene and uh, as well as that we're going to have the 12 bongs and we have a gentleman who has flown in the whole way from out of town uh, well actually the outskirts of our town to be with us here ladies and gentlemen on board the bus yes we are going live uh, with this show for the last oh it could be as nearly as long as the bus sessions the bus session is going to 365 365, 366 days, 367 days. So it's a year and two days we're going if we sing this evening. And uh, it's 12. So let's start off with bong, 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 bong. And we have uh, Mick Foster here and Mick has been training all morning. Mick, could you give us four bongs of your best bongs, please? Bong, 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 bong. Bong. And as you know, it's there, ladies and gentlemen, it was in the same key as my bong. This is a musical interlude, ladies and gentlemen. Bong, 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 bong. Yes, indeed, folks, you are all welcome to the 12 Bong Show, coming to you in association with Canor Hygiene Limited. And let's start off our show with all our friends who are looking in from downtown Mullingar and Karina Ball is looking in from Holland. Great to know you're on board, Karina Ball. Okay, our birthday shout-outs start off with Jordan Berg, and she is in Gulf Park, oh, Gulfport, Florida, and actually she's the daughter of Shane Keegan, and a big shout-out to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Jordan, from Mullingar to Florida, happy birthday to you, and as well as that, we have Carmel Gibney, born, bred and reared in Mullingar, wishing you a happy birthday from us here on the 12th. Bongs show and Lee Ward coming in from Mullingar wishing you a happy birthday Lee and Kilbegan handmade chocolates it's your birthday uh, and a uh, absolutely very 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 nice chocolate made in Kilbegan okay a big shout out to you guys and we have Shauna Thompson and she is in Leakslip hello to you and I always remember driving through Leakslip and getting the smell of chocolate no it wasn't chocolate it was chewing gum yes indeed do you remember that Mick? Yeah, that was in Kilcock. Kilcock, wrong yeah. town, sorry. Wrong town, but well, I, I, three mile away. <laughs> or thereabouts, but it was, it was a mighty place because we used to pull up, Tony Allen and myself used to pull up there opposite, the, there was a, a shop that did wafers. Right. You know, and, and the old time wafers with the, the lad for marking it and yeah. take the knife over the water and a coat of six mini wafer or whatever. And oh, that's near a hundred years ago, but look, remember the best. We're going to get to that in a few minutes. Yes, he loves ice cream as well, but off it at the moment. And we have Peter Scally, who's looking in there from Mullingar, and he's from the Department of Defence. Happy birthday to you, Peter Scally. And Philip Craig is looking in from Castle Pollard. Castle Pollard is that way, or maybe it's that way. I'm not too sure. Anyway, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we have a competition on the 12 Bong Show and we are giving away tomorrow. No, Friday. We're giving away uh, a trailer. A trailer for the weekend. A, tra a trailer is not for Christmas. It's for a weekend in Machinery Warehouse Parts. Machinery House or Warehouse Limited, I beg your pardon. And uh, they are giving away a trailer and you can enter the competition by going to their Facebook page. Enter the competition. We will pick the names out on Friday. Uh, that's Machinery Warehouse Limited. And not forgetting Kenny Carson and Elizabeth, uh, Isabel Carson. And they are 37 years married this morning and uh, congratulations to you both and they are in Manor hey that's Manor Cunningham and our food shout out ladies and gentlemen today has to go to our good friend we meet him every morning gives a big wave that's the coffee man who's in the Mullingar industrial estate big shout out to you Frank hope you're keeping well and uh, our Facebook recommendation uh, is today going to uh, on Gwail Skull and Colleen and they are putting up absolutely amazing stuff on their Facebook page and as well as that they're teaching which is a fantastic thing in Irish and keeping it all local. So if you want to check out that school, if you want to send your child to that school, just go to the page and check it out. I think they're 
taking children for next year or the year after or the year before I'm not too sure and not forgetting uh, shop local pick of the day goes to the only record store in Mullingar. It's called 3345records.com. And uh, if you want to contact them, they're on 85 27 and ask for brr, brr, Keith. Hello, Keith. How's it going? And they're on 38 Mount Street. And if you really want to get really close to them, all you have to do is go to your Google machine, put in N91AY91, and that'll tell you exactly where they are in Mullingar. Don't forget, folks, if you would like to promote your business or join us on board the bus, tell us your story. Or if you'd like us to come with our bus to your business, send us a PM and we will brum, brum, drive the bus down to you. Okay, folks, we're going to uh, chat to a uh, a gentleman who is an international star. He is part of the famous uh, traditional pop group and uh, they are Foster and Allen. They have had 150 million records, sorry, 30,000 million records sold over the world in the, their lifetime. They have done 50 albums and they kick-started it in 1975. Ladies and gentlemen, the legend that is Mick Foster on board. Mick, hello to you, sir. How are you going, Ray? Great to have you on board, Mick, and uh, delighted that you are on board the ship. Your uh, next of kin actually joined us with her um, song not too long ago. She did, yeah. She was. Uh, she actually came to show me where you were this morning. <laughs> she says, I bet they bring you, you could get lost. And you arrived on time because I thought you might arrive on traditional Irish time. No, no. Uh, I'm obsessed with time, even really? for no reason. Uh, I, I was never late in my life, um, except for school, maybe. But uh, other than that, uh, if, if I says to you, look, Ray, I'll be in your house at 12 o'clock, I'll be here at 10 to 12, or maybe a quarter to 12. I'm a bit like that myself. It's a, look, it's a nuisance, because uh, not everyone is that way. Yeah. And, there's, a, there's a few times, there's school time, yeah. there's teacher time, there's your own time, and then there's a whole collection of other different times. I am the same myself. I love to be early. I hate to be late. A few minutes before you're meant to be there. Yeah, it's but great. But getting to the, the, the bunch of time, she started off in 1978. Is that correct? Very close, yeah. Um, 79, I suppose, before it went to number one. Right. But uh, we, we, started, we started in 75. We actually started in London. And... Uh, we were over with a band and there was no much work for us when we came home. So a fella, a friend of ours from Derry had opened a pub in Kilburn Park, which was just off Kilburn High Road. Yeah. And he said, would you and Tony stay behind and do the pub with just the keyboard and the melodeon and sing a few Irish ballads? And so we said we did. And it went down that well. We says, to hell with the bands. Uh, we'll go just ourselves. And, and that's what we did. And 46 years later, we're still here. Brilliant. And uh, uh, you look a little bit like uh, Tony himself. I don't know, is it been with each other for so long you sort of morph each other at this stage? Well, look, at, we started playing together first in 1967. Go away. And uh, we have a unique record that we never had an argument. No, never mind a row, we never had an argument. And they were like chalk and cheese. Yeah, totally. You know? Maybe that's why it works what, so well. What we to say is, or what I to say is, that there were like a lad on the road. I'm pulling to the left. Right. Tony is pulling to the right. Yeah. And with me on the white lane. <laughs> and that's the kind of the way it works out. Getting back to the early days, I remember the bus outside and the van, the Toyota van outside Caffrey's, parked on the side of the, the, on the footpath. The name of the band was, and I can't remember it. Uh, at the very start, it was Liberation. Okay. It was four of us. And... Uh, then, you know, uh, between one thing and another, we've kind of figured that it wasn't going to work. Look, if you have any more than two, you're going to have a row. Right. You know, because four of us are not going to agree. So <coughs> we just said, look, we started off with two, yeah. and uh, we'll finish at two. With two. <laughs> and our, our first gig in, in Ireland was in Dowlands of Prosperous. Go away. For 30 quid. And then we used to play Crooked Wood for 30 quid and the Inn in and Cool and uh, then we moved up to 50 quid. And <laughs> but all these places you've gone back to, like you go to Abbey Shrew and you can play for three or four days. Yeah, well Abbey Shrew was, was always a, a great venue because uh, out 
Milltown, Rad Conrad and that neck of the woods, Bannley Carry, they were always great supporters of us. Right. For whatever reason, I don't know. But no uh, matter where we were playing in the area, lads would be there from, from home. And, and <laughs> that time, like, there was no such thing as drink driving around. You could yeah. have a couple of pints and drive home and there was going to be no danger of, of a lad... Uh, you know, giving you four tickets and, and, and you handed them in and got a bike. So, you know, there was nothing like that ever. So, did you ever think that with uh, music that you would travel the world to the extent that you did? No, n- not a hope because, you know, we, we were a cross between a, a, a Cayley band and a ballet group and uh, there was a, a famous duo in Scotland called the Alexander Brothers. I seen lad them playing the piano, lad playing the accordion, yeah. and the piano player sang. And it took me um, seven years to convince Tony Allen that that's what we should be doing. But anyway, eventually, yeah. a, a constant tipping and wear a stone, and I got me own way, and I, I still have it. But uh, <laughs> not a hope. Uh, we started off. We were both working and playing music, and we said, look, Jess, if we could only get, you know, to make enough that we didn't have to work as well. And within, we started in 75, in 77, we went professional. And... Uh, and what you work at before? Look, at, i done everything. I, both of us served our time at the hardware builder providers. Oh, right. And uh, I started off in Wallace's in, in town here. And then I went to Fitzsimons's in Grove Street. And then I went to Shaw's. And then I went back to Fitzsimons's. <laughs> And then I went out on the building site with a friend of mine, he was a small builder, and he showed me how to lay blocks and plaster and stuff like that. And it was great because, you know, a lad wanted a shed or whatever he wanted, you could give him a price. So if if you had to leave today at 2 o'clock to go to Kerry, you could. And if you weren't in till 2 the next day, you know, that was grand because he wasn't paying you by the hour or by the day. You, you gave him a price for the job. And the quicker you got it done, the better. And as I say, from 77 onwards, the last bit of block laying and plaster they did uh, was for Oli Conroy out in Sauna that does the, these the pallets. pallets and all that stuff. And uh, 1977, that was the last time I, I did anything for anyone, you know, that I was going to get paid for. Interesting, because my father, uh, when he started in the business, he was a carpenter. Yeah, I and remember him as a carpenter. Frank Mulligan used to do all the... We lived in Mearscourt. And <laughs> Frank Mulligan... My father was the chauffeur in Mearscourt. And we lived in the yard. And Frank Mulligan did all the work in Mearscourt. And your father was with him. Wow. And uh, so that wasn't last week. Like, you know? Tell us, you came, you came from Kildare then. Your father came from Kildare yeah. and you went to Mearscourt, yeah? I was born in Kildare and we moved to Milltown or Mearscourt in 1960. And I'm kind of there ever since. And I was rooting at a button accordion. And um, then I found out I could get lessons on a piano accordion. Mm-hmm. But couldn't get them on a button accordion. And so I moved, changed over. And then, of course, I met Frank Gavigan. Right. Uh, First thing. Who was teaching button. Well, you know, he wasn't teaching as such. He had been, but he gave it up. And uh, I had been learning how to read music and all that. And... Uh, I asked him, you know, would he teach me a bit of trad music? And he says, well, I'm a button accordion player, but sure, I give it a shot. But he did. And, you know, Frank was a kind of a genius. We've said this yeah. a million times, yeah. that lads with degrees in music, you know, they wouldn't be in the same league with him. You know, he could listen to a tune on the radio and write it down in proper music as he was listening to it. Yeah. He'd go in <clears throat> in his short trousers into Gunnan's pub and he'd be there smoking a cigarette, talking to lads and drinking a pint. Yeah. And he'd say, air a tune for me, Frank. And he'd look round, the big old cigarette boxes yeah. on the ground. Yeah. He'd tear up, get one, and he'd open it out and he'd write the five lines. And as he was doing all this, he'd break out in proper music now. It wasn't RBCs, yeah. proper music. And he'd hand it to me. And he, he said, sure, have a go at that. And... Uh, I've, we found during COVID we had nothing better to be doing any messing about mm-hmm. and Myra was, was looking through uh, old drawers at home and we found a rake of manuscript music that he had written for me and Go. for Mick Foster written on the top of it Go and, on. And, there was, and there was one particular tune 
that that he wrote that he made an odd mistake. Right. And he got tipex and he tipexed out and then he put a little note. Don't play the white notes. <laughs> that's like an old joke, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's the truth. Yeah. And it's a tome still. Like, uh, Meyer found all these jokes and uh, they would be a kind of hope and maybe to put it into a book form at some stage. Definitely. Uh, the, 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 the Stick his name on it. Yeah. Will, I know it's been a while since you played the, the machine. Will, will you give us one, <laughs> at least? <laughs> I'll try, but... Uh, it's it's fourteen months and uh, it's unbelievable. You know it's it's, but look at we'll give her a blast and see what happens. We we've did a little bit in the studio, but there were, you know, there were songs and and stuff like that. that yeah. That you'd, you'd manage with with one finger, but a, a bit of Irish music now could be a. Ah, look at we'll look at. I said we know a problem. Very simple is this though. Uh, if I mess it up, I mess it up. I, well, I'm doing, it every, I'm doing it every day, messing up yeah, songs, well, but we're doing them. It'll be grand. I can say is I have never listened to you playing on your own but Michael that was just <laughs> beautiful well look at um, you know a lot of years ago I was probably well able to play but I'm really just catching up on me well, big time you know there's nothing wrong with them notes <clears throat> getting back to music I remember we toured South Africa in 1983 and I remember being in Johannesburg and all I could hear on the radio one morning was Foster and Alan and then Joe would come on yeah. And they do an interview. You were huge in South Africa, probably very still, very we much were, still. And, and we we toured South Africa the first few times mm. for the same lad that you went for. That's right, Quibels. Ronnie Quibel. Yeah. And Lourdes was great. And it had made you awful lazy because we were part of a show. We were headlining the show. <laughs> right. All they wanted was 45 minutes. God. So there was, there was five, there was us and there was four other acts on yeah and we felt a kind of bad about it and so we used to do an hour go away but it was great because we used to do two shows a night and ronnie was fierce well organized and then of course uh we came home after the first one and of course there was war because we went to south africa all this carry on about apartheid was going on that's right his carry on and of course being being from the country you know, I, I'd be a kind of tick and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, if a lad says, you know, ask me to do something, I might do it, but if you tell me, if you tell me to go out the door, I'd probably go out the window, you know, that kind of a, but my argument was then, and still is, that yeah. South Africa was a political problem and situation, and they shouldn't have brought, it, you know, sport or, or entertainment into it, and mm. we did the Late Late Show, and of course there was lads, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if they could be, as they would have been. And I remember we we playing the town hall in Auckland in New Zealand one night. Right. Shortly after that, and there was a riot outside. <laughs> a riot at Foster and Allen. Correct. I have the <laughs> newspapers at home still from the next day with the cops fighting with these protesters because because of the couriers that we were for daring to go to South Africa, and we were playing in the National Stadium one night in Dublin yeah. and lads got in uh, and they had yokes under the rockster and whatever and about halfway through the concert they, they, they got up about 12 of them and they stood in the front of the stage with placards God. mainly saying that we were 
that we were, we can't say on the family show what the thought we were, but anyway, look, we survived all. Exactly, that. and you have toured all over the place at this stage. I mean, you've toured New Zealand, South Africa, Australia, America. Do you do much in America? No, we never did that much we, mm. in the early days. Right. So, you know, we actually had to fly from America to London to do Top of the Pops back in 1982. But we never had any hit records in, in America. So you were just another Irish group going out. Exactly. And there was only the two of us and uh, a keyboard and a, and a melodeon. And uh, we did the whole month of March because St. Patrick's Day last the month of March in America. And that was, when we started in 75, Jimmy McGee, the late Jimmy McGee, the memory man, <clears throat> and Mick O'Reardon, who was uh, the Emro man, yeah. became the Emro man. They were involved with the record company, and they said, lads, it doesn't matter how good you are, uh, you know, y y you need a gimmick and, and a name or whatever. So when we said, throw the gimmick at us, and this, the Barry Lyndon film was after coming out at the time. And Jimmy McGee says, why, what about the Barry Lyndon outfit? Would you wear them outfits? Yeah. So we did, and we got them made in, in Dublin, and then Jas Fagan used to make them for us. But going to America, this was 75, going to America in 82, we decided in our wisdom that we wear green Barry Lyndon for them, right. the outfits. Yeah. So, which we did, and went down the storm in America, and they were talking about Foster and Grant, you know, the sunglasses crowd, they were getting it all mixed up. But anyway, uh, the next thing top of the pops came. So we had just finished in America and we had to fly from New York to Dublin and wait in Dublin to see if the record went into the top 20. If it did, you had top of the pops. You're on the plane. it didn't go home. So it went about 18. So we had to go straight from Dublin to London with our green outfits from America. Excellent. And of course the media thought that we dressed up as leprechauns for Top of the Pops. We got so much publicity out of the, the outfits. outfits. More so than the song. Yeah. And, you know. But Eng England is huge to us. Yeah, I mean, I mean we've, we've we played we've, England. We've done England twice a year for the last, oh, well, since, since 80, 83. And long tours, like you'd be up and down the country, like you'd be there for a month, would you? Oh, you would, really. Mm. And they, when we go to Australia and New Zealand, long ago, you do six weeks, maybe eight weeks. And would you, you play every night? Countries, if, if at all possible. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, we found that you'd be better off playing than have a night off. Because, My know, father agreed with that. Yeah, with the very same, because, you know... <laughs> Lads we, be running the muck. We weren't killing ourselves on the stage, you know. We weren't lepping around like Joe, you know. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, I never broke sweat on my life on the stage. <laughs> and... Uh, I'd sit down for the Irish music and I'd stand up singing a drat on or whatever I was doing and talking rubbish. But, you know, two hours, it went like that. That's right. And uh, it, it was deadly. But now, as the years went on, uh, you know, we came back uh, in 2019 mm -hmm. from Australia and that was our 20th trip out there. So we said, you know, we're not 20 anymore. We mightn't bother going. Yeah, uh, we had did New Zealand the year before. We weren't able to do the two of them together anymore. Right. But the east side of Canada was great for us, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. The rest of Canada, they didn't know who we were. And as I say, outside of the Irish circuit in America, which was glorified pubs. Mm, uh, that's right. Yeah. They didn't know who we were. And uh, you were on the Tommy Tiernan show. I didn't see that, but uh, I heard it was a great carry on yeah, altogether. Fierce crack with Tommy because we would have met him before several times, you know. Lovely guy. A ah, fierce nice fella. And yeah. uh, we had done stuff on television in, in Australia with Hector. All oh, right. And uh, But anyway, we had this. The rang to see would we do this Tommy Tiernan show, and we knew the format. So the was up in a hotel. Okay. The wooden lads drive our own cars in to RTE in case he'd copped them. And the bras in a taxi and the bras in the back way. And the wooden lads entered the green room till he went on stage. And, uh, you know, he was, there was a couple on before us. And, you know, one was a kind of a, oh, he was a kind of a, a, a bishop of some description in, 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 in 
he was a Jew, I think. Right, yeah. And a oh, rabbi or whatever yeah. it was. Was he from Malta? I don't know where he was yeah. from, but yeah. he, was, he was very good. But Tommy Tiernan was was awful crack with him, so he got away with murder. <laughs> <you know>? he, <laughs> he, he says to him at one stage, when he asked him a question, now he said, before you do this, I'm not going to blow up, am I? You know, all this carry on was going on at the time. And uh, there was an old actress on before us, and then we went on, and you could see, you could see the relief on his face because he knew that there was nothing he didn't know. And of course, we, we gave one another hell, yeah. and, and uh, you know, he was hitting us about the tax, and the tax man and all this carry on. And then we toured Australia for the same lad that he did. All right. And we knew a bit about him as well. And uh, one of the things was that he wanted to drive across Australia from from east, from west to east. Yeah. And they said, uh, fair enough, do that, but don't go early in the morning, three or four o'clock in the morning. Kangaroos and all them would be out. Oh, know? right, yeah, it hit them on the way. So the bottom line was Tom Shin went in a sports car at three or four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And hit a kangaroo and rode off the car. And of course, when he, when he hit me with the with the tax shot, I says, "What about the kangaroo on the right and off of the car? <laughs> Left it out." <laughs> he did it as we as the show was. With oh, the go thing. on! On the television, he, he left it out. Wow, it there's all the lads. That's uh, Joe looking in there from my ladies. They come in every day and they give us a great beep every day. So the crack is always good here in the bus. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, uh, will you do one more? One more tune. Uh, One I'll, more tune. Well, well I'll try. Definitely. I'll be able, but so can I go down fighting. Go down fighting is right. Loves a trayer. Excellent. Uh, and the lad told me one thing. He says your neck is that hard they could build a cathedral on top of your head. So I'm going to prove it now. <coughs> There's the lads. Joe's always always in good form. <laughs> Legend. You started off playing a, a, a nun taught you, is that right? A in... nun taught me how to read music and then Frank taught me the rest. And uh, most piano accordion players, when they're playing, they drag the accordion from here to Ballinacarry. Oh, you right, know? right. And it, it, it never. But when I started doing television first when I was 15, yeah. the fact that I had learned from Frank and he hardly opened the accordion. And I was a fierce Jimmy Shan fan. Now, they were all button accordion players. They had barely opened the accordion. And they got into the very same. I never go any further than that. And the uh, producers used to be going bananas. Will you pull it out so people know you're playing? Showbiz. You know, showbiz. <laughs> and, uh, and, he, and another thing was, when he started playing in competitions, mm -hmm. a piano accordion was a head instrument in, in trad music. You won three competitions, is that right? Or more? Three, three all Ireland's. Ireland's. And six Leinsters and ten Westmeads. I won 19 competitions in my time. Fantastic. Anyway, the last All Ireland was 50 years ago, so I don't even think about it. Yeah. But um, a competitions. Piano was a head instrument of traditional music when I started. Right. And of course, the fact that I learned from Frank meant he had me playing it not better than anyone else, but different. A different style. And those lads loved this. And the fact that I didn't open the accordion any more than that, and then I'd give it an odd barrel like a button accordion, sounded so much different. And uh, 
that, you know, the old, the old timers loved what I was doing. The other thing as well is that uh, it's Foster and Allen, and I always remember that you'd go off and you'd do a tour on your own of your music, and then Mick would be at home twiddling his thumbs. And I don't know what he was at, but you were able to divide up and go on a tour of s- traditional music. Yeah, well, still, Tony used to do a bit with, with uh, you know, say dances. Mm. Country and, and Irish music and, and, and dances. Yeah. And Myra and, and Eddie Dehy, Lord of Mercy and Eddie. Drumming. The original drummer with the Drifters. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Myra and Eddie and myself would do Irish nights. Right. During the summer, Foster and the Land didn't tour during the summer. The biggest reason being, you won't get people into a concert at half seven of a summer's night. That's right, yeah. So, Tony used to do dances. we do Irish nights in pubs. And uh, uh, the three was a piano, drums and, and myself. I'm sure the crack was great. like, And it was just something different from Foster and Allen as well so it, I just thought it was something totally fantastic that you could do do you know what I mean I don't know whether it was fantastic or not but it was different and it gave us a break from each other as well I suppose yeah and so you know yourself that that uh, when you have a certain amount of hit records you have to do them every night regardless. that's correct yeah, yeah it doesn't matter what you think if you don't you'll be shot yeah and so with the result your two hour programme it's not going to vary that much yeah but then what he was doing on his own and what we were doing, it meant you could do something totally different and it kept you from saising up. The last thing I remember uh, when we met you and we went live, we went live in Gunning's pub. Yeah. And there was a, Jesus, there was a raft of lads out the back. Oh, the, it's a huge we, band. We used to have great sessions there until COVID. Mm-hmm. And uh, because I suppose that was Frank's pub and uh, there was, uh, sure, it was mighty. He used to play there on a regular basis. And we kind of, took over and we, we ran the, the concert and we put up the monument. That's right. And all kinds of carry on, you know. But I remember, I, I think it was your father was telling me one time that that uh, Joe had a, a a jag or some savage fancy car anyway. But it was a fierce frosty night and wherever they were going down the west, this car was going like a motorboat, you know. It was, <laughs> It was going every way on his straight. Right. And and they pulled up in, in Rat Conrad and went into Frank and Frank had a ran on four L at the time. Right. So Joe says, I want the four L. So your father and Joe and whoever went on to the dance in Frank's four L and left him the jag or whatever it was to go home. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Well, look, uh, thanks a million, Mick, for being on board and uh, thanks for uh, introducing the show as well because uh, the other day we were down celebrating that young man's birthday, uh, young Tommy Nally, who is 80 years of age. You wouldn't believe it, would you? No, you wouldn't. Well, I, I do tell him, I do all I said, would you say thought you were older? Because <laughs> I, I know him for 60 years or, or more and we'd give one another hell, but he, he doesn't he, he doesn't look at and I'm sure he's as lively and he... He goes walking every day along the canal, and and uh, I, I, he was he was telling me that morning of his birthday. He says the dog nearly pulled him into the canal. He he ran round him and tripped him, and he fell. <laughs> and he was saying that's all he would have needed to have given an hour trying to learn how to ride this bike. And it says, then you'll be dead. And we waste the time. So you don't have to crack with him. A super, super, and fair play to him. The other thing is that you've kept all your friends and all the lads are out there, like especially um, Mr. Uh, Noel. Oh, Noel, how do you want? Well, you see, lads have said to me a lot of the times, you know, your feet was on the ground. You never lost the run ears. Yeah. These fellas wouldn't let you lose the run ears. Can you imagine going into a with a swelled head and not wanting to talk to Noel Hedge on their path? and hit you with a bar stool. They would indeed. Well, look, thanks very much, Mick. You're a legend and there's loads of people looking in. Uh, we might have a just... Uh, if we, Let me see. We check out here if we have anyone looking in. Uh, there's loads of people looking in from all over the world and uh, all saying hello. Oh, Sarah Jane Foster's on board. Hello. Oh, I oh, went oh. to Australia with them in 2019 and I wasn't able to keep up with them. Fair play to you, Sarah Jane. And uh, who else is here? Maeve Botany's looking in. She joined the bus there recently. That's on one channel and then there's another channel here we're going live but everyone is just watching so look Mick Foster thank you very much no bother um, great to have you on board the we'll bus we'll do it again we will do it again so there you are folks we'll just turn our cameras around again and uh, we will just have a look here and uh, as I said once again folks uh, great to have a legend on board the ship 
come on, Ray, he's on another camera there. Uh, great to have Mick Foster on board the bus. Uh, this is our tour bus, and uh, Mick is touring with us at the moment. He's been with us since uh, 12 o'clock. This is Ray Dolan with the 12 o'clock show, and the time is 12.34. Once again, thank you for joining us. If you want to share this with a friend, please feel free to do so. And if you want to join us on the bus, give us a PM. What's a PM, Mick? I don't know. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs>